Hello everyone and welcome back to Working on Exploring, where we're still working and not exploring, but I hope you're on the road or in the dirt. In this video, we're going to show you our high capacity battery system that Steve built out in the old lands and has been migrated to the new rig. We'll also show you the full system for our power generation, conversion, and distribution to the camper. Hello. Well, Steve has spent the last two days, maybe three days, migrating the power bank, battery bank, all over from the old Lance Kemper into our new cargo cargo box. And it is all going to fit in here, where there will also be two inverters, two DC to DC converters, and let's see if you can see this, battery bank. The battery case was mounted in a way that it could be removed for servicing, which it never needed. So this is the first time we've dismounted this big battery since it's been in service for over two years. This is our Nissan LEAF battery bank, providing 17.5 kilowatt hours of energy. On our blog, workingonexploring.com, there is a full blog post documenting how these battery packs are configured and mounted to the underside of our sliding camper. There's also details showing our BMS wired up to the land and great resources to refer to if you are exploring the build-it-yourself battery. So far what I've come up with is I've, I have some trouble with the length of the inverter and I probably can't get all 35 batteries in there, I'll probably have to do a 28. Before this goes into the camper, I thought I'd take a moment to give you a little tour of what we have here. This is the battery that will be inside of the electrical compartment for the new camper. Uh, this pack here consists of 35 Nissan LEAF uh, battery packs, a total of about 17 and a half kilowatt hours of uh, electricity. Um, it's equivalent to about 22 uh, large lead acid batteries. This weighs approximately 300 pounds as it sits right here right now. There's 35 cells at just about 8 pounds each. Um, and what we have is this is a 24 volt system so all of this battery is wired up with seven, 7 cells in series and 20 cells in parallel and a total of 35 uh, battery packs together. So this provides uh, enough energy to supply the camper for about a week or more a normal operation without any additional charge uh, and when I say normal operation I mean the refrigerator electric refrigerator runs all time the electric uh, induction cooktop the electric 
Instapot all are used for cooking. Uh, the lights are on, you know, lots and lots of uh, electrical devices in there. So this is lots of, lots of power. Um, and it's about ready to go in. It connects in the electrical bay to two different inverters. There's a 4,000 watt inverter that powers the air conditioning system, the induction and the microwave. And then there's a 800 watt inverter that powers the refrigerator and all of the minor equipment. Um, the intention is, is to keep the small inverter on 100% of the time in order to support uh, life in the camper without consuming a lot of additional power. And the enlarged inverter is really only used when we're cooking or air conditioning. Um, so to show you what we have here, so in, in these two large stacks here, there are 12 batteries in each stack. Um, on this side here, you can see all the nice little colored spaghetti wire. This is what is called balance leads. Each of these each of the cells in this uh, is connected to a battery management system which will balance out the uh, electrical capacity of each of the cells. Uh, and so because I, I have space constraints, I had to put 24 here, I had two on the side, and in the back here I have nine. Um, these five cells here in particular are reconfigured cells. Each of these are the factory original Nissan Leaf I've actually reconfigured these cells here internally so that they're, they operate as a single single series uh, cells. But uh, all of this is connected and, and, and fully charged right now too. So it is a, a non-significant amount of whoop-ass if something goes wrong uh, electrically. So uh, I've been very careful in putting it together and I, but I have caused probably half a dozen small incidental contacts in, with, with sparks, small amounts of sparks, and mostly putting the balance leads on. I haven't had any major uh, mishaps with major power wire, but uh, it's always potential for that. Anyway. Hey, honey. Yes, dear. You do light up my life, but that's not the right way. <laughs> not the right way at all. <laughs> yeah, it's <such> cute. <laughs> okay, what are you doing now? Okay, so I'm getting ready to put it in. So the this actually separates into two, two pieces. So there's the L-shaped section here is one piece, and the 24 uh, cells is another, packs is another piece. Uh, this is the most positive end of the battery, and this is the most negative end of the battery. And uh, they all get hooked together uh, inside the camper. So. of power generation for the high capacity battery. One is solar and the other is a second alternator. Next we'll show you how the solar panels were mounted. As part of the design there is armor along the edges of the camper. For our shakedown trip we were only partially complete and have been adding sections over the last few weeks. The last area to cover is along the top edge. The top is fabricated as a metal fairing, which provides two key benefits for this rig. One is protecting and moving tree branches out of the way easily, and another is providing a bracket system for the solar panels. This eliminates the need for putting holes through the roof and creating future leak vulnerabilities. I'm working on the armor for the top, of, top corners of the camper. Uh, this is a piece here in the, in the break right now that uh, is going to get bent. I'm going to give it four bends. Uh, I have marks set on both sides here over here for the two bends on this side and the two bends on the other edge. Um, this is uh, 40 thousandths aluminum and this is, uh, this is a 48 inch piece of and it's as large as my brake will handle. Uh, it would handle something a little bit thicker but the 40 thousandths at this width is, is enough. It's fairly, fairly straightforward. It doesn't do a perfect bend. It, sp it springs a little bit. Uh, but this, uh, having a sheet metal break has been a, a fabulous part of this project. I haven't had one in my shop for the longest time. I've wanted one in this project. This, this type of work is exactly what I wanted it for. And I really enjoyed having it. So this is how it goes. Hmm. 
usually you start with the brake closest to the edge. being pretty exacting and setting this up because I have all these other pieces have to match it so I want to make sure everything looks exactly right this is a 135 degree bend this bend is 45 degrees in order to get this bend I use this angle right here and I bend it so it, my 90 degree thing touches just a little bit over there we have it. That's the piece. This is, goes on just like this. This is the rain gutter. This is the bend. 18 and 17 and 5 eighths of inches, 3 quarters and 2 and a half inches on the short leg. For both solar installations and lithium batteries, you do need a solar charge controller and a BMS or battery management system. Periodically, the solar charging may be insufficient to fully charge this high capacity battery bank, and we wanted a redundant power generation setup. After reviewing the options, Steve chose to go with leveraging a second alternator operating at 24 volts and dedicate it to charging the rig's battery bank. There is a full technical write-up on our blog, workingonexploring.com, of the F350 second alternator setup. And if this is something you are researching, I encourage you to take a look at the information as it may be insightful for your own project. A crucial topic covered is why it is important to monitor the alternator's temperature and how Steve has set up his console gauges. Uh, this panel here in my center console is the control system and monitoring system for my vehicle alternators, both the 12 volt and the 24 volt. The 12 volt system on the bottom reads out the amperage, voltage, and temperature. Um, it, although this is a thermostat, it does not cut off the 12 volt alternator. On the top row, we have four controls. We have a, a voltage output control, we have the voltage and amperage readout, we have the current temperature, and we have the cutoff temperature, and we have the switch, which activates the 24 volt charging system. Uh, when directly charging a lithium ion battery, um, the low internal resistance of the battery will demand a lot of amperage, uh, particularly if the battery is at a low state of charge. The problem with that being that the battery is not intelligent, this alternator is not intelligent, and neither one of them can manage their own uh, control mechanisms. And so what will happen is, is if you just flip it on and leave it alone, it will the alternator will burn itself out probably within five to ten minutes because the, the amperage is just so high. So what I have done is I have, uh, in, since the enemy of the alternator is heat, I have installed this thermostat here which monitors the current case temperature of the, of the alternator and has a cutoff at 118 Celsius to prevent it from getting any hotter than that. And, and once it cuts out, it'll drop. To, it'll wait till it cools back down to 110 Celsius before it starts charging again. Um, this is the method that I use to directly charge my lithium ion battery. Um, how do I control it? So when I, when I first decide to use it, I, I flip it on 
I check what the voltage re reading is, is, and then I immediately look at the amperage, and I determine if the amperage is, is what I would like to charge at. And I can choose to charge at a lower level, I can choose to charge at a maximum level. And right now with my 120 amp alternator, I knew that the maximum level that it could, could run at and not overheat was about 70 to 75 amps. So, um, but at the time I couldn't, I couldn't affect the voltage control of the output of the alternator. So now what I have done is I've um, added this external resistor uh, voltage control to my, to my voltage regulator so that when I'm operating I can turn this, this 10 turns precision potentiometer to, to dial in exactly what the output voltage and exactly which relates to exactly what the amperage is at any given time. And I can leave it there and it'll charge steadily at that amperage. I've just installed a 220 amp alternator so I don't know what its current uh, maximum steady state current is, uh, but I, I can figure it out by looking at my, my temperature monitoring here. If I, I can see it as I tweak and turn the voltage and amperage up, it'll, the temperature will climb and I have self-imposed 120 centigrade kind of limit as far as I don't want to heat any more than that. So I can, I can reduce the amperage, I can increase the amperage using this uh, voltage output set point. And so that's what allows me to decide, you know, if I, if I were to say I have a, a four hour drive and I need a little charge, I, I turn it on and I may set it to only charge at 20 or 30 amps. I don't really need it to charge particularly fast because I don't need a lot of uh, recovery and, I, and, it, and it could, you know, be where I need it to be when I get there. Maybe I got a short drive and I need a lot of charge, so I can run it up as fast as, as high as it'll go, and that'll give me the options of of controlling it very very easily just by altering the output voltage of the alternator. Now we've covered the core topics of power generation and power storage, so let's move on to the devices used to convert our stored battery bank power to usable power. There are two DC to DC converters, one for 12 volt devices and the other supporting our 13.8 volt devices. There is a 4,000 watt inverter we used for the high power devices, and for the new rig, we added a 800 watt inverter to support the continuous refrigerator power requirement. Now we'll show you where the distribution of power into the camper starts. All the breaker panels are contained in this camper's control panel. Um, from this point on down, all the rest of the panels are breaker panels for 13.8 volt, 12 volt, another one for 12 volt, and then here is our 120 volt AC panel. Thank you for joining us and checking out our custom camper. We have much more to do in the rig through the year, and we'll continue sharing our camper projects and providing inspiration for yours. If you like this video, make sure you click the subscribe button and click like to follow our continued progress and travels in the new rig. We hope to see you out on the road, and good luck with your working and exploring.